All right, guys, we're here with the wonderful Queenie Chan. How are you, Queenie? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Yeah, so we're here at your stall, mm -hmm. and we see we've got lots of different uh, publications here. Yeah. But I just want to ask, what made you start with art? It's a rather long story, actually. I started drawing when I was 18, and uh, when I was uh, 24, I got published for the first time. That's uh, this book here, uh, The Dreaming. Okay. Yeah, that was with an LA-based publisher called Tokyo Pop. Back then, manga was very popular, and I wanted to do an Australian kind of ghost story. So this story is about a um, haunted school in an Australian bush, and it's very picnic and hanging rock. So it's very Australian. <laughs> Sold quite well. So very good. after that, it got me some work with um, author Dean Koontz, and um, this is a uh, prequel to his best-selling Odd Thomas series. So it's about a psychic fraggle who sees dead people. Right. And uh, he, it was his best-selling series and these sold quite well. It was aimed at a younger audience and so uh, that was a lot of fun working with him. Um, yeah, so that was an honour. And after that, I worked with a lady called Carly Chan on a book called Small Shed, which unfortunately I don't have here. But that was an interesting mix of prose and comics. And so uh, I thought this would be an interesting time to do something different. So since then, I have done what I'm working on now, which is the Fable Kingdom series, and you can see it's a mix of uh, prose and comics. Okay. Yep, very different, but I found a new audience is actually these days very receptive of this sort of style, and it attracts people who read prose and people who read comics too. So uh, about Fable Kingdom, I'm on book three right now, and it's a uh, fairy tale inspired fantasy about Red Riding Hood, um, who finds out her grandmother isn't her real grandmother. And uh, it's a bit of a fairy tale mashup, so she goes on an adventure to find her two real grandmothers, who are both queens of powerful kingdoms. And so she goes on a journey to find out who they are and who she is. Yeah, so uh, lots of fun with uh, all these different fairy tale characters there. So it's brilliant. And so you can see, like, we've got different um, genres across all the the works that you've worked on. Yeah. Um, Mostly fantasy and horror. So what have been some of your inspirations that you've taken from the past? Um, I think I like dark stories, and I like exploring the dark side, and I like also exploring the idea of uh, parallel fantasy worlds. And so that's why I write epic fantasy because. I find that enjoyable and I have interest in sociology, in history, things like that. So creating uh, parallel worlds, completely different worlds, it's fun for me because I can work my interest into it. So that's why I get so inspired when I think about these things because uh, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy reading it, enjoy writing it, enjoy drawing it. Mm -hmm. uh, previously you did mention that you started when you were about 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Way what? old <laughs> compared to most people, that's true. But, but uh, what made you sort of go from one day thinking, that's it, today I'm going to make a comic? Like, you know, what was that catalyst? It's strange. I've always watched cartoons and anime as a kid. I've always loved it. Always liked to write little stories in my head about these characters and what they might do in an alternate timeline, etc. Lots of people do that. It's just fan fiction. And for me, I liked to write when I was a teenager, just writing prose stories. And it never occurred to me to turn into a career. I just, I'm still not interested in being a prose writer. But at some point in time, I was reading a lot of manga. It was, I was reading Ruron and Kenshin. It's a samurai manga. And uh, I was a big fan at the time, total fangirl, and I don't know what about Volume 17 made me think I could do this, but that happened midway when reading through, and it's like, you know, you know, he's good, it's good, and I thought, you know, I write my own stories, maybe I could give it a go at drawing. Oh so that's how it started. So, and like a lot of comic book artists who started off drawing when they were three or something, and they were constantly drawing as a kid, that's a common story. I'm not like that, I started off writing, so I think of myself more as a writer who draws. That's probably the best way to put it, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. There's a big degree of difference. and um, But now I'm actually seeing a different side to my art because I'm starting to participate in art exhibitions. And so uh, there's been a number of interest in uh, comic book artists and um, in art galleries. And so um, I'm doing an art exhibition with a gallery called Artshine Gallery, which is one of those newer galleries in Chippendale that's been popping up. And this is a group, set, group art exhibition with a bunch of people from the Sydney Comics Guild. And so it's been super fun. And uh, it goes from the 25th of June to the 20th of July. So if you're in Artshine, which is near the Chippendale area, please drop by the gallery and have a look. You know, it's, uh, it's something new and different for me, but uh, very exciting. Well, that's brilliant. Yeah, very different sort of um, atmosphere to a convention, which is what I'm used to. But uh, it's interesting to be in a different environment and trying to sell your wares to a different kind of people. Yeah. Well, Queenie, um, thank you very much. And thank you. yeah, we just hope that we can see more of your products in the future. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.